Hello, and thanks so much for joining us. The program is Black America, and I'm Carol Jenkins. It is our pleasure today to have with us the legendary costume designer, Paul Taswell. He is designed for close to 30 years, although when you see he's a baby, you know, he's received many honors, including an Emmy Award for his work in NBC's The Wiz Live, a Tony Award for Hamilton, written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. His work is currently being featured in the new big screen version of West Side Story, directed by Steven Spielberg. And MJ, the musical on Broadway, written by the incomparable Lynn Nottage. Paul, thank you so much for, you know, for being with us today. Well, it's so great to be here. Thank right. you. So clearly you're a part of royalty because the names I just read off are the royal family of the theater, film, the entertainment industry. So you have to tell me how a young boy growing up in Akron, Ohio, gets to do this. Well, I mean, you know, you know it's a, a dream come true. I, uh, you know, as I was growing up, you know, I, a full circle moment, I uh, uh, was in a production of West Side Story uh, when I was in junior high uh, in Akron. It was a summer musical uh, production that was, you know, kind of citywide students coming together uh, for this production. So to then uh, be asked to design the costumes uh, for Steven, Steven Spielberg, right. I mean, that's, you know, it, it's uh, mind-blowing. Uh, I know, absolutely. I know. And you said that that, one, that play you know, it probably informed your whole theatrical life in, in so many ways. It certainly did. It certainly did. I mean, it, it, it was, you know, I, I grew up, um, you know, I, I wasn't very athletic. I, uh, I had asthma and my way of, uh, you know, and bless my mother. I mean, you know, she provided, you know, activities inside where, you know, I was working with my hands. I was drawing and painting and sewing and, you know, do, using all these skills or, or developing all these skills that I now use as a costume designer. Um, uh, but then to formalize that with, uh, you know, the musical, you know, the world of theater uh, and uh, finding great joy in that kind of community uh, was life changing. Right. So your, your mom was, you know, so she had you as a little boy and she taught you how to sew. That's right. You know, so you owe everything to, to her. Well, there, and others along the way, but that is, Indeed. you know, that is tremendous. You know, I, West Side Story was the first uh, play musical I saw too as a, you know, as a, as a kid, you know, and so it informed my life as well. Not in exactly the same way. You know, I, I can't sew, but I, you, you were telling me before we started taping that you really wanted to be an actor. You thought that that would be your place. And so how did you get steered? How did it happen that the costume design? Well, I was, you know, uh, going back to West Side Story and then productions after while I was in high school, um, I was doing both. I mean, I was in a, a performing arts program in high school. And um, we would take trips to New York, see Broadway shows, uh, you know, we all get on a bus, a chartered bus, and, and you know, uh, spend about two or three days uh, seeing all the new Broadway shows. Uh, we also went up to uh, Stratford, uh, Ontario, and we saw a lot of, uh, you know, live Shakespeare productions. Um, but, you know, in, in both of those, uh, you know, the, the, you know the, those spaces or you know the, the the opportunities you know I saw you know I, I was marveled at uh, you know the clothing you know and you know the costumes and and what it took for them to uh, create these costumes so I you know I, I was developing both my skills as a performer as well as as a costume designer uh, and when I was in, then in college, I came to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, yeah, sure. and I studied uh, fashion design for a year. Uh -huh. Decided I want, I, I missed the, the the community of theater, and so I transferred to North Carolina School of the Arts. Uh, now they call it the the University of North Carolina School of the Arts in Winston Salem, North Carolina, and um, that was an amazing program. Is an amazing program still today, uh, but my uh, major was costume design. So tell me, tell me how you, because I, I guess one of the very first things that you did was bring, bring on the noise, bring on the funk with George C. Wolf, yeah. another legendary royal member of the royal family. Absolutely. How did, how did that happen? I mean, that right from the beginning. Yeah. To, to be in the company of uh, genius. 
Um, I, I, at the time, uh, I think that when I, when I came onto his radar, I was working at the arena stage in Washington, D.C. Um, I was the resident costume designer. I think he saw something that I had designed uh, the costumes for there. And, you know, he approached me about coming to New York uh, to work at the public uh, for a, one of the productions that he was directing. Uh, I did that first, and then he uh, asked me again to come and design the costumes for Bring It to Noise, Bring It to Funk, uh, when it went to Broadway. Um, and that was my first Broadway show, and I was nominated for a Tony for that production. <laughs> you know, the very so first. It, <laughs> it, it, I mean, you know, and, uh, fully, about, uh, you know, com completely unexpected. Right, right. Talk about, you know, luck, but uh, also gift, yeah, uh, you know, so. I mean, because that doesn't happen happen easily. Uh, speaking of first time, a uh, Broadway debuts, your, you know, MJ the musical just opened, uh, as we're taping this, it's only a day or so with that, all of that excitement. And uh, the, um, I, well, I want to say two things. Number one, the young man who plays Michael Jackson, it's his Broadway debut, speaking of, you know, the first. It, it's incredible. His name is Miles Frost, is yep, that? That's correct. He is stellar, uh, you know, as, as Michael Jackson. Um, with his moves and his sound, I mean, you know, he he's a wonderful performer, definitely. Right. Well, and, and a, gr a great man. I mean, you know, he's is, really a wonderful is, man. And, and as you point out, doing eight shows a week too, like right, just yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. So congratulations to Miles. And now, what about the costuming for Michael? I mean, mm -hmm. wasn't he in so many ways a costume designer himself, or? Well, he, I mean, he had a, uh, you know, throughout his career, he had a team of designers that designed for him, a couple that uh, designed, a, you know, a, a significant period of, of time for him. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, Michael, you know, he, because he was an auteur, I mean, he really did uh, have a hand in, you know, creatively, you know, so many aspects of his, you know, his concerts, you know, how he put himself out out there in the world. Um, I'm sure that he, you know, they were capturing his vision in his clothing. Um, when I went to design uh, this this production, you know, it it falls because it's it's a fictionalized moment mm -hmm. in time where where it's you know it, it is based in some reality and definitely you know it, it's the reality of Michael Jackson but um, you know, the, the, the moment that, you know where this story happens didn't actually take place um, uh, so you know for me it gave me a little bit of space to sure. be able to uh, reconceive or introduce uh, clothing that wasn't necessarily exactly what what he wore but then we do recreate or I've re recreated some of the uh, the iconic looks that were his right right I, I ju was just looking at a clip of the t -sh the white shirt and yep. socks and all of that somewhere in a storage room somewhere I'm sure I have Michael Jackson <laughs> red pleather or leather jackets or something you know yes. uh, you know, from that whole time that either I or my children had. You know? Yes, absolutely. So al always, always big fans. So, uh, you know, the Broadway, uh, you know, is your your element. You know, we would say that that is what, in so many ways, you trained for. But now you're having tremendous success uh, in film as well, and we want to talk about uh, West Side Story. Uh, as we do this, have this conversation, we don't know about the Oscar nominations yet, but I'm sure, you know, you're going to be uh, nominated and win. You know, we're, we're voting for you. Oh, thank uh, you. Just extraordinary. Uh, I've, I've read some of what you have to say about updating West Side Story, mm -hmm. uh, of, of bringing a new look to it. And, you know, the first thing that went was Maria's dress. You know, tell, tell us about about that, you you designed this astonishing yellow as opposed to the, you know, the original purple. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're speaking of Anita's dress uh, Anita. for America, the, right. the number America. I mean, right. I you know, uh, Steven Spielberg when he, when he first approached me uh, was very you know he, he, although it is a remake of West Side Story, it is more. Um, influenced, uh, largely influenced by the original uh, Broadway show uh, that was done in 1957. So it was his intent to uh, reference that as our period. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it was a daunting task 
um, exciting but daunting task to take on, uh, you know, redesigning, the, you know, because the, the, the film that was done in 1961 is the one that so many people hold near and dear to their heart. Um, so, for, you know, uh, as the costume designer of this new vision, I wanted to have audiences embrace it in, you know, the same fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I wanted to provide my own uh, view. Uh, and, you know, I, because I'm a, a modern designer, because I'm a designer of 2022, uh, you know, it, I, I can't help but, but design through that lens. I mean, when you think about the original designer, uh, Irene Sheriff of the film mm -hmm. and even of the Broadway show, she was designing clothing that was that was modern day for her. For her day. Yeah, right, right. and um, for me, I, I'm referencing back. I mean, I'm you know I'm I'm creating a nostalgic look at uh, what that is, but then I'm you know I you know I I can't help but use the language of. Uh, 2022 as I'm exploring what that is. Right, right. And uh, I read that uh, Steven Spielberg, who usually works with his own team, asked you to come in. And So what was that like, you know, th that cooperative work? Well, it was exciting. It was, I mean, it, it, it was, a, you know, a, a beautiful experience every day. It was exciting to be on set. It was, you know, Steven is very engaging and uh, welcoming of new ideas and new ways of seeing, uh, you know, seeing character. Um, you know, l looking at research together with him was, you know, it was, it, it was life changing, you know, right. and, you know, he's such a brilliant man, uh, you know, wh when he talks about how he's imagining uh, filming uh, the work and and then to work with the rest of you know his support ar around him those people that have done other productions or other films with him you know that was a huge honor to be a, a part of that team yeah I, I, I love uh, the whole part about the boys you know in their t-shirts and yeah. uh, it's the character they what they didn't want they didn't get to wash their t-shirts very often so no. you had to build in you had to build that into the costumes for... yeah I mean it's it's the way that the, the film starts you know, from the beginning, I mean, you see the rubble that is being created by all these buildings that are being torn down. Uh, and torn, you know, it, he, uh, Stephen so, you know, so uh, smartly uh, you know, it is showing you images of that space where Lincoln Center now stands, you know, that that uh, uh, you know, San Juan Hill, mm -hmm. you know, indeed is based in reality. Uh, and then it, it sets the tone for what's really going on uh, for the, the two gangs, you know, for this white gang uh, that, you know, is, is getting, uh, you know, displaced and, and for this aspirational gang uh, of, of migrants coming from Puerto Rico, um, you know, coming in and trying to start a new life, you know, and what that mashup is, what that conflict is. Um, but it's all based in a, a real uh, happening, right, you and know. defined by 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 colors. Absolutely, you know, Absolutely. when you see yeah. the reds approaching, right. you know, right. the blue, you know. Right. I mean, just incredible. Speaking of research, your your first Tony uh, was Hamilton, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, tell and and you also did In the Heights with Lin Manuel. Mm -hmm. So both of those, you know, extraordinarily successful uh, productions. One in well, the, I saw the film version most, uh, you uh -huh. know, recently for. Yeah, for that, because I lived in the Heights, you know, and I was telling you that I had uh, just talked to Luis, uh, Lynn manuels dad, be because they do such wonderful work in the community and with a actors and, you know, all theatrical and, you know, visual artists as well in, in uptown uh, Manhattan. But the research for Hamilton uh, <laughs> must have been something. Talk with us a little bit about that. Oh, sure. I mean, you know, that uh, process... Uh you know, that was another amazing um, experience, you know, collaborative experience. You know, the, you know my first uh, few reads of Hamilton, you know, and understanding uh, the language that Lynn was using, uh, you know, the, and the poetry of, uh, of that language. I mean, you know, just, you know, how beautifully it was written. Um, uh, you know, trying to follow that and apply that to the story of our forefathers. Uh, you know, it's a very familiar story that we've all been, uh, you know, told, you know, for, you know, in our history classes. 
Um, so we have, you know, I, I had that relationship to those characters and seeing those portraits and seeing them on our, on, on our dollar bills and on our coins. But then uh, to imagine, uh, you know, and this is part of what our conversation was with both Lynn and with Thomas Kale, the director, uh, and along with, you know, the, my other collaborators, designers, um, you, you, you know, thinking about, okay, well, you know, there are these young people, you know, very, very vital people uh, coming in and trying to create a new country. Uh, and, you know, the, the, some of them were upstarts, you know, and, uh, uh, the, and they were also, you know, military men and, you know, or, and, and women, um, uh, you know. So, you know, it's you, trying to make sense of all that. And then, you know, speaking of the lens that I see life through, you know, the, you know, the, the world of 2020, you know, 20, 21, 2022, 20, um, you, you know, it's imposing some of that imagery on it as well. Uh, so, you know, the, the amount of research that I did in the 18th century, in the American revolutionary, uh, revolutionary period of my forefathers or of our forefathers, uh, you know, that, that all collectively went into a Bible. And right alongside that was all the modern imagery that I thought might be applic ac applicable as well. I mean, that, you know, all, all of the ways that designers have taken the 18th century and reinterpreted it. Um, and uh, we finally decided that it was best, you know, because, it w you know, there was a question should we uh, s set this musical in a modern time look, a silhouette, or should it be 18th century? And we made the, the smart decision to uh, do a mashup, do, you know, that, that uh, we see the characters through the actors that are playing the roles. Uh, we, we keep their hair looking contemporary. Uh, they have contemporary faces. There are m many different colors of brown. Uh, faces, uh, you know, uh, uh, playing these roles, and uh, then the clothing, the silhouette, although stripped down, is of the 18th century, and uh, you know that th that contrast keeps it really dynamic. Um, and then, you know, using uh, silhouettes, you know, that are mashed up again in a different way with contemporary pieces, 18th century silhouettes with contemporary that then, uh, you know, it, it gives you this very uh, new feel, um, which I think, uh, you know, we, we were able to achieve. Well, and well, congratulations on your just deserved uh, award for, for that and all of your work. Uh, we uh, interviewed uh, Kathy Perkins recently, who's mm -hmm. uh, talking about legendary yeah. uh, uh, design, lighting designer. Uh, and, and we asked her the questions about, you know, African-American black, uh, blacks succeeding behind the scenes is something that we really don't see. Well, you are behind the scenes, but we're not aware of that and that pathway. I mean, we're, we know the actors. We know the people that we see. We even know the writers and the directors, you know. But beyond that, we're just beginning to see the success level, you know. And, and we know that you are you know, tremendously successful. Uh, what do you see uh, around you in terms of, uh, you know, the black, black America rising, you know, behind the scenes? Well, it's, so, it's so very exciting right now. I mean, you know, I, um, you know, you speak to, uh, you know, a point that has, has become, and, you know, has always been very important for me, uh, which is the nurturing of, of young uh, artists. And you know, and even more so, young designers. You know, you know, designers uh, and designers of color that that want to enter into this field. Um, you know, when when I was starting out uh, as a costume designer in theater, there were very few. You know, I could probably count them on on my hand on one hand. hand sure. uh, the number of black designers that were, and and you know, you know, e even. Uh, uh, anyone other than white designers that were actually uh, working on Broadway. Uh, there, 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 there were very few. Um, there were uh, also few in the film industry as well that at least were having a light shined on them. Um, but through this pandemic, it's uh, provided space 
because of Zoom, because of, you know, uh, just time, you know, kind of brought down from being busy all the time, um, you know, to, uh, to engage with designers that I've never met or, you know, and, and uh, costume supervisors and, you know, others that are working uh, behind the scenes, uh, I but in my field. Uh, and there's a huge group of uh, people of color that are working in, in the world of, of costume design for film. Uh, as, and that's developing uh, it within the world of, of theater as well. Right. So for, for, the, for the kid out there who wonders, well, what's the, be what's the best pathway? How do I do that? If, I, you know, if, if they don't have a mom who's teaching them how to sew, mm -hmm. you know, what's, the, what's the career path? What's the school path for that? Um, I, you know, I definitely would say uh, you know, uh, hone your passion um, and, uh, you know, f just, j you know, jump in and, and figure out if, if this is something, you know, the kind of work that you would want to do. I mean, it, it, it involves, you know, which is why it, you know, I look back on uh, my training and what I was interested in. You know, I, I as you, you were mentioning, I had an interest in, in performance, so I had an interest in theater um, and engaging within that community. Uh, I al also uh, love to draw and paint. Um, I, you know, I, I love the world of fabric and sewing and clothing. Uh, I um, enjoy immensely researching and researching different periods, re re researching uh, different cultures um, other than my own, um, looking at photographs of my family, uh, those people that, that have come before me, and also those of other families, you know, and uh, uh, I think that collectively, uh, you know, I, I apply to what I do, you know, it's so I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, invested in uh, creating through that, you know, that's my medium, you know, and, and creating character through, you, by using all of those, uh, you know, the, all, all those specific, uh, you know, techniques. Um, you know, so you know, I, I think for a new, you know, a young designer coming up, it's having that interest. It's being drawn into, and it comes down to really being drawn into the idea of and wanting to tell stories through clothing, through making decisions, uh, specific character decisions, through the world of clothing and costume, um, and you know that's where I find my joy, and you know I, I, I certainly hope that you know others want to as well. So, so it's interesting that you're looking at at photos of your family, you know, that, mm -hmm. and most people I do believe look are looking at the face, mm -hmm. and you are looking. At what they're wearing, yeah. you know, and and putting them in their time and place, and this whole idea of the fabric, mm -hmm. of understanding the fabric, and you know, and painting. I mean, so that you have an advanced degree, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's, you know, required? How do you gauge, you know, g getting it? Or is that something that people say to you when they're looking, or did they earlier? Uh, if you had your advanced degree in design. Yeah. I, there are many ways to go about, uh, you know, making it in this business or, you know, entering into this profession. You know, for me, it worked to have a formal education. Um, I come from a, ba you know, a background of, of educators. You know, my, my grandparents uh, were, were educators. My mother is an educator. Uh, you know, so, so that was very important for my family. Um, so I knew that that you know I was going to need to do that um, to, you know to keep things nice with my family. But you know I also think that it, it benefited me because uh, I was given you know with the institutions that I went to, uh, both University of North Carolina uh, School of the Arts and then uh, at Tisch School of the Arts at NYU, um, they provided all of those skills that I needed to then enter into the business. Um, and it was a business at that time that you know had uh, glass ceiling. You know, it it, it uh, you know I I needed to enter into it proving myself, um, and and more so because I'm a black man. I, I you know needed to show that I knew what I was doing, and so I learned the the professional way of showing that. Um, the other way of entering, you know, for for you know, and and as. Uh, the, our industry is opening up uh, to other cultures, to you know, to uh, brown and black faces, um, and and everyone is feeling more comfortable. And that you know, 
having that conversation is happening in a more comfortable way. You know, the, the idea of apprenticing and assisting and uh, being more hands-on in that, you know, and creating that, that education that, that's more geared to the person that's doing it, you know, that, that can happen as well. Yeah. Well, Paul, uh, it's terrific to talk with you. I, I, I need another half an hour to do it. You have to promise that you'll come back. I will. And do, well, I just want to ask you, do you have like a favorite thing you've created in all your career? Is it the... Oh, gosh. You know, it's, it, 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 it is the same with, you know, every time I uh, enter into, into a production or right. into a film, right. that's the, the favorite. So right now, you know, it's... It, you know, I, I would say there's West Side Story and there's MJ, um, and Hamilton is always there. Always, yeah. always. Well, I would say for you out there wanting to do the same thing that Paul Taswell has done, watch all of his productions and you'll and look at the clothing instead of the faces and listen to the voice. I mean, all of it will be done together, but you'll get quite an education, an advanced degree, I would say, in costume design. Paul Taswell, thank you so much for being with us. and. You know, we'll be listening out for the uh, for the Oscar nomination and the win and, uh, you know, be following your career. And thank you for being in conversation with us. It is absolutely my pleasure. Thank you. And, and thanks to you all out there for joining us today. Uh, I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America. And we will see you the next time.